if you have been in a situation whereby you are wondering, oh, but I prayed, I prayed for this person that died. I prayed for this person. I, you know, I was sure that this person was going to be okay. In fact, this person was getting better, but suddenly this person just left like that. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new here, you're welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I do appreciate you. Thank you. So today is the third episode of our series, the Letting Go series. Please, if you have not seen the first and second video, please, after this video, go and watch it so that you can catch up on that. Our scripture reference is taken from Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19 in a message translation. I'll put it in the description box. So for today, the first thing that God is calling us to let go is that God is calling us to let go of losses. You know, the loss of a loved one, the loss of a family member, of a friend. I don't know about you, but in the last two years, I have experienced the most number of losses than I've experienced in my lifetime. So there's a lot of healing going on. One of the most difficult losses to experience is the loss of, is the loss of a loved one. It is so difficult. It is a weird kind of feeling. Like, grief is, is something that you don't recover from. You heal with time, yes. But a little thing can trigger it and make it to remember. So grief is something that I've noticed that people have struggled for a long time to overcome. But this is not the plan for us. God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. It is not God's will for us to be in a state of grief and a state of sorrow. Yes, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So I pray that whoever is passing through this difficult situation, whoever is grieving the loss of a loved one or a friend, I pray that God comforts you and heal your heart and make you to come out from it better and stronger in Jesus' name. Some of us have also experienced the loss of a relationship. Oh, you believed that this relationship is going to go simply. You were even seeing the future with this person. But something just happens that suddenly the relationship was you know, cut off and it has affected you, it has, you know, destabilized you. According to research, experiencing the loss of a relationship is like experiencing the death of someone. It is that deep. But again, it is not the will of God to wallow in depression because of the loss of a relationship. God is calling us to greater things. Most of the time, these relationships that were actually broken did not break suddenly. It was either toxic, most of the time these relationships were toxic so i believe that god has the best in mind for us so most times when he sees that we are not ready to let go for our own good he allows these relationships to end so that greater relationships would come our way some of us have also experienced the loss of a job or you know the loss of our finances or we believe that this job the job security in this job is very strong or nothing will happen but suddenly you know, you are just laid off. We, we see that the experience in the last two years during the pandemic has really changed a lot of things. It has made people that, you know, once had jobs to be jobless. It has just destabilized everyone. People have lost their jobs. People have lost millions of naira in their businesses. Entrepreneurs are struggling, you know. People that have invested millions of naira in businesses have experienced losses and they have been destabilized. But I want you to remember that God will not make a way in the wilderness if there is no wilderness in the first place. God will not make rivers in deserts if there is no deserts in the first place. So God requires an inadequacy to manifest his adequacy. If we have everything figured out, then there is no place for God in our lives. There's something that cannot be explained. You wonder, oh, this person that I lost, don't know if you have been in a situation whereby you are wondering, Oh, but I prayed, I prayed for this person that died. I prayed for this person. I, you know, I was sure that this person was going to be okay. In fact, this person was getting better. But suddenly, this person just left like that. And you are asking questions. There are some questions that we cannot answer. There are some things that we cannot understand. You are asking God, oh God, this relationship, I was, we have been dating for 10 years. I've been dating for 20 years. <laughs> I don't know who does that, but this is just, you know, in the relationship you are, Asking God, oh God, you have been dating for this so number of years. Oh God, I've invested time and money into this relationship. I've invested time and money into this business. Why is it that this 
this thing didn't work out you know you have a lot of questions you have a lot of doubts you have a lot of you know worries and you are beginning to ask god why 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 but remember that if you are complete in yourself without god then you would not need god there, there has to be a place for god in our lives if we have everything figured out we will not see the place of god but in situations whereby you don't know what tomorrow holds you don't know what will happen in the future you would always run back to god and this is not to say that you should only go to god when you need him for something no what i'm saying is that there has to be a god factor in every human being without the god factor then an individual is not complete god has to be the center of your existence there has to be a void for god to fill just like a healthy person does not go to the hospital but only a sick person goes to the hospital the more we find that we are not complete on our own the more we seek the intervention of God and the more, the more we you know, seek the presence of God to make us complete and to make us whole because it's only in, it is only in God that we find the meaning of life it is only in God that we find a reason to continue and to continue to live and not to give up even after we have passed through a lot of difficulties in our lives though you might not understand the amount of losses that you have been through though you might not understand why you prayed for this person this person did not recover though you might not re understand why you lost millions of naira in that business that you invested in I want you to know that God sees everything and God cares for you and you cannot make a way in the wilderness if there is no wilderness you cannot make rivers in the desert if there is no desert so trust in God hold on to him believe that everything is working out for your good believe that God has best in mind for you the plans of God are of good and not of evil to bring it to an expected end so know that if what you are passing through now it is not is not a glorious end they know that it's not the end it is not over until it is over as long as you have God with you then you are more than the conqueror that says we, we may pass through the river we may pass through the fire but it will not consume us it will not overtake us because we have God with us and I pray that whoever is passing through the loss of the loved one the loss of their finances the loss of their businesses I pray that God would replenish you in a million folds and just the way he replenished Job after losing his family and his resources I pray that God will replenish you in a way that you will not remember the things of old for your shame God will give you double glory in the name of Jesus it is well with you in Jesus name and that's thing that God is telling us to let go of is that God is telling us to let go of our own plans we do not know the future and so whatever plans we are planning for ourselves ourselves is only a function of our limited knowledge we do not know everything only god knows our future god has seen it all and so it is only wise to depend on the plans of god because if your own plans would fail over and over again because you do not know your future you do not know the plans and purpose god has for you only god knows it and the plans of god for you as i said in the previous point is of good and not of evil to bring it to an expected end so let's go of your own plans depend on God's plans for you because God's plans for you is greater don't be bent on following your own plans don't be bent on following your own will remain in God's will because you can never go wrong in the will of God you can never go wrong in the plan of God when a man's life pleases the Lord it makes even his enemies to be at peace with him so let's go of your plans let's go of your will quit struggling with God and let God have his way in your life when you're in the will of God you begin to think like him the more you spend time with god the more you become like him and the more you begin to think like him the more you begin to see like god and the more your will begins to align with his will so in order for your will to begin to align with god's will you have to spend time knowing the mind of god you have to know what god is saying to you you have to know what god is instructing you to do part time and obey as you continue to walk side by side with god then you begin to see things the way god sees it and automatically your will begins to align with his will and so does your plan begin to align with his plan but outside of God you only see things from a very mediocre perspective from a very selfish angle but when you are in God you see things the way God you see through the lens of God so it is only in the presence of God that our will is aligned with the will of God any plan that you have any will that you have that is self-glorifying anything that is you notice that it is only going to draw attention back to you and then that plan is is most likely not from God one way to know if the plan that you have is from God is when the plan would always give glory back to God 
and help humanity because our reason for being on this earth is to glorify God and be a blessing to the world. So if your plans in life are not centered around glorifying God and giving glory to God, then that plan is definitely not from God. May God help us in Jesus' name. The last thing that God is telling us to let go of is letting go of idols. Idols don't necessarily mean a physical image that you put in your room. It might be the things in your heart, it might be your priorities. When your priorities are not set right, when your priorities are not, as I said before, to give glory to God and to be a blessing to humanity, then that is an idol. Anything apart from God that takes first place in your life is an idol. You can turn the things that God has given to you to an idol. You can turn a person to an idol. You can turn your job to an idol. You can turn different things to an idol. You can turn your beauty to an idol. Whatever is not reflecting back to God, whatever is not making you prioritize putting God as the center of your life, then that is an idol. And God is calling us to let go of idols because idols only draw us far away from God. Idols only distract us from the plans and purpose that God has for us. It is only causing more harm than good. When we focus more on the blessing than on the giver of the blessing. When the things that God has blessed us with is distracting us from the original giver of that blessing. So know that whatever God has given to you is so that you can be a blessing to the world and so that you can serve him better and not so that you can be distracted by it. God is our source and every other thing is our resource. I know that God is a jealous God. He is the one that gives and he can also take. A blessing can become a curse when we misuse it, when we allow it to take the place of God in our lives. So be careful when something that God has given to you is beginning to distract you from the person that gave you that thing. May God help us in Jesus' name. So that will be all for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have you experienced a loss recently? How has this loss affected you and how have you been able to cope? And if you are you know, still in the process of recovering, what steps are you willing to take going forward to recover and to be better and come out from it stronger and better? Let me know in the comment section so that you know others can be encouraged and be inspired by your responses and can also find ideas to overcoming losses and coming out better and stronger. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this blessed you, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Until then, remember that I love you, but Jesus loves you more. Bye. Whatever your heart is broken.